was back in an empty apartment, back at Split Oak. I breathed a sigh of relief. <sighs> the scent of oatmeal raisin cookies, Vivian's perfume, it all hung in the air again. I checked my watch. It was 3.56 in the afternoon, but outside it looked like it was midnight. God, I was dizzy. I stood up and I realized I had just been in the same place where I was listening to Kilgore's Symphony of the Universe. But everything was gone. It looked like Jessie's place the day she disappeared. I walked around the strip department to see if I could find it. And in his bedroom, right in the middle of the floor, was an apartment key on top of a leather-bound atlas. Kilgore was really gone. The song in the walls was long gone too. And the only thing left in my head was the memory of Vivian walking out the door on this day, five years ago. Episode 9, Acceptance. What was it that Kilgore said? The one constant in our lives is change. That is when you find wisdom and solace in the new. I'd never thought about the future in a hopeful way before. When the leaves on the trees would change into orange and red, and the kids would holler on their way off to the bus into a new school year, it always made me sad. And after I, we, lost Benny, bright yellow school buses made me nauseous. That reminded me of everything that had changed, of the ones I loved who'd left and never came back. Kilgore was right. I had thought I was complete. I'd finished learning, finished making myself new. There was no new discoveries to make, no new feelings to feel. Life had disappointed me and I'd grown content to disappoint everyone else around me. Split Oak proved me wrong, again and again. It brought me to the cusp of something new, a great discovery, but never pulled the bandana from my eyes. Jessie said, here. Was she still here? If I could find her today, today of all days, I could break the cycle. I could replace the memory of Vivian with something better, a victory instead of a loss. All the pieces were starting to fit together Find Jesse, change my future. I'd be whole again. Francine didn't look happy to see me. She didn't invite me inside. I told her I had a theory about Jesse, why Jesse left, and why I'm the only one who can find her. Francine didn't respond. She just stared at me, bemused. I showed her Kilgore's keys and told her how I found them in a similar way that we found Jesse's. Finally, she invited me inside. It wasn't the apartment I remembered. For some reason, everything seemed tilted, like the apartment was off its axis. Francine sat down on the couch, and I felt unbalanced as I took a seat next to her, the feeling of color and sound all around me again. Even though I couldn't see it this time, I knew it was there. And there were the crawlers again, too, stuck in her sliding glass door. I'll cut to the chase, Francine. Kilgore is gone. I found his keys in the same manner we found Jesse's. All the furniture was gone, too. No notice given, no notes left behind, nothing. Francine narrowed her eyes. Do you think that he had something to do with her disappearance? Kilgore told me the one constant in our lives is change, and I think being here kept Jesse locked in the past. Split Oak tethered her to all of who she used to be. Scared, alone, yearning for connection with a man who couldn't love her in the way that she deserved. Escaping was her only way into the future, to change and become who she's supposed to be. She raised an eyebrow and said, Well, if that's true, then what business do any of us have in finding her? Francine was right. Bringing Jesse back wasn't fair, but I had to try. I braced myself and then I admitted that I needed to track her down. 
Finding Jesse changes my future too. Five years ago, almost to this day, my son fell into a coma. He was a diabetic and he didn't get his medicine in time. And then my wife, Vivian, left without me. Francine looked heartbroken, but she stayed quiet. For a second, I thought she might reach out for my hand, but decided not to. She allowed me to continue. If I can find Jesse today, I can replace the memory of Vivian with something better, a victory instead of a loss. I think if I find Jesse, I can change too. I can come out from the shadow of my past. I can move on. Once I bring her back, we can escape again together. We'll both be healed. Francine shook her head and told me to leave. It was more of an order than a request. I expected to feel rage at her dismissal, but I couldn't be stopped for a petty disagreement. No matter how irritating it felt to be ignored, it didn't matter anymore. The only thing that mattered was leaving. Soon, Francine would see that this is the way out for me, for her, and for everyone else at Split Oak. loaded the truck with gas and packed the back seat with water and food and left Split Oak. Winding down the drive, through the trees, and finally out of the complex. I felt powerful, unstoppable. I listened to the radio, till it sounded like the same country song for hours, as the sprawl of suburbia shifted to a greener climate, to more woods and hills and mountains in the distance. I started to think, if I felt free now, how good would it feel to find Jesse? But then the further I got from Split Oak, I felt this break. Part of me was excited to push forward towards Jesse, the answer to everything, but the other part of me felt another pull back to the place where I'd learned everything. After all this time, everything around me was hopeful. The past was going to be behind me. I was going to be new. That country song, it was still playing. At least I think it was. But that couldn't be right. Unless the station was stuck on some kind of loop. The old DJs would never let that happen. Something about the song was familiar. I mean, more familiar than having heard it on repeat for the last two hours. It meant something. Maybe to me... Maybe to Vivian? But I couldn't quite connect the dots. Then I noticed something else. The sign for Ed's rib joint, just off exit 229. I'd passed it about an hour back. There's no way I was seeing it again. I'd been a rocket, one way, no looking back. Then I noticed more landmarks that hadn't been apparent to me earlier. A giant oak, a field with red rusted tractor, overgrown with ivy. The water tower with the smiley face sun painted on it. Like a drawing of Benny's from the fridge. Then a berry farm I'd gone to a few years before on a bad date shortly after Viv left. That's when I saw the first crawlers whiz by, then another, then three on the driver's side. Then they were swarming all around the truck. The cab even started to rock a little bit. Through the swarm, I could make it out again. Ed's rib joint, the berry farm, the tractor, the water tower, the picture, Benny, Benny, Benny. I should have slammed my brakes into the swarm pass, but I couldn't fight the urge to keep moving. I kept taking corners like a daredevil. Gravel flying, Carl is keeping up with me every bit of the way. I tried to keep my hands on the wheel you know, to keep from flying off the road and just barely managed to keep the truck under control before I... I opened my eyes. I was on the side of the road on my back, bleeding from my forehead. My truck, it was on its side up ahead. The only thing that lit up the forest around it. The doors were closed and the windows intact. How did I get all the way over here? And then I saw him in the middle of the road, surrounded by crawlers in a spiral formation that went up to the sky. It was Mustache. He was glaring right at me. His eyes were red. Where do you think you're going? I was going to find Jesse until you got in the way. Tell me the truth. That is the truth. That's all I managed to choke out before Mustache started towards me. He got within inches of me. I could smell him. 
like fresh mulch. It was oddly calming. Try again. God, I wanted to slug him, break his goddamn nose, and spray red across the infuriating mustache. But I took a breath. That wouldn't solve anything. We'd be just two bloody idiots crumbled in the middle of the road, and I wouldn't be any closer to finding Jesse. I'm trying to fulfill my purpose here. To do some good. If I can find Jesse today, I can make up for what happened, what I did to my family. Acceptance is the first step, Leo. Good work. I used to be just like you. Angry, insecure, or lost. I understand the look in your eye. It felt hot under my collar again. I felt like he was naming me. But this wasn't the precursor to a bar fight if I didn't want it to be. I could let it go. I could listen. I could ask all my questions before I get back on the road. Did you trap me here? I keep seeing the same things over and over again. Me? No, sir. Nope. It's been this way. Long before me, and you, and Jesse. Before all of us. I felt my jaw slack just a little bit. I felt like I'd fallen into a cartoon. Why wouldn't he just give me a straight answer? Why did everything have to be a puzzle? Tell me why it's been this way then, huh? Enlighten me. Mustache smiled a cockeyed smile. The leaves around us rustled as the wind picked up. A glow emanated from the shade of the trees. The crawlers poked their little heads out of the foliage. That seems to be a yes. Alrighty then. Enlighten you, I will. Mustache gestured for me to follow him. And so we walked, together, into the trees. The leaves beneath us glowed like sand at night. Another memory of Vinny. His first time at the beach. Bioluminescence. The rollies leave it behind. Have you noticed? Some nights they really make split oak glow. It's funny how we had different names for the same thing. I almost like rollies better than crawlers. I don't know why I call them rollies. Maybe they remind me of uh, roly polies. Anyway, it feels funny giving something a name, you know? Some shit you can't bottle up and slap a label on. Sort of like the complex. Calling it the complex was the closest we ever got to trying to define what the hell Split Oak is. It's what you said it is. An apartment complex. You know that ain't it. Well, that ain't only it. The crawlers crept closer to him until some of them rested on his outstretched fingers. What do you notice about each tenant at Split Oak? I shrugged. I shrugged and watched a crawler burrow into the tree. I thought about Jesse and Kilgore and Francine. Everyone's a little annoying, I guess. Needy. Mustache snapped his fingers. You got it. They are needy. They've got needs. That's why Split Oak wants them. To unpack them. Everyone here, including you and me, needs a good unpacking in the old noggin. We can't move on, we can't live, not really, without it. The complex won't let us. I still wasn't following. And by mustache chuckle, he could tell. In simpler terms, you'll stay lost, you'll stay at the complex, until you figure out your way out. Once you do that, once you get like Jesse and Mr. Kilgore, you can go. I can go. You're saying Jesse was allowed to leave? She wanted to? I know you think she got dragged off into the night or offed herself somewhere, someplace, but that's not the case. You never had to save her, Leo. I don't understand. Where is she? Someone's got to figure it out. Whoever said Jessie could be found by anyone but herself. She earned her departure, and now she's off into the ether, onto her next adventure. In the end, that's what we think the complex wants for all of us. We? What do you mean, we? Well, your reports go somewhere. I, I know, because I take them there. We collect them and go over them. 
we add to the pile. The people I work for have found Split Oak and have been watching her for a long, long time. And since you got here, I've kept an eye on things. Well, on you. The people, Leo. It was the people. They're the best resources we've got in this nutty world. I'd fix their pipes, their linoleums, their frigid airs, and I'd get to know them. Not deeply at first. I'd glance around and see what they had on their walls and on their coffee tables. You know, what they brought along with them. What they could have meant to them. I made up my own stories. Tried to have them pegged my own way. But then I'd get to talking to them. And I'd learn how surprising and funny and sharp the average Joe can be. And how I was wrong about all of them. And glad to be. And soon, honest to God, I think they would break things just so I'd come and see them. Like I was a bartender and they were the guy at the end of the bar who came to remember and forget all at once. I put that together with all the weird science stuff that was going on. And it hit me. More or less. Then... My mustache came to me. I stood for a moment, and the fairy tale I just heard spun around in my head. It made sense. In the way that the crazy dream you had the night before made sense before you woke up. But I was starting to see. And where do I fit in? What could Split Oak want with me? Mustache stepped past the trees and into a clearing where his shadow fell on the grass. He put his hands in his trench coat pocket for a moment. Then he turned. Isn't this exactly what you wanted in life? To feel appreciated? To be powerful? We've given you the world here and you're still acting like you don't have enough. That you aren't enough. The turbulence you're feeling, the unease. It's going to last the remainder of the flight, kid. There is no turning around. Sit with it, deal with it, understand it, love it even. Until, my dear Leo, you land on the other side of this vista in one piece, or in pieces. I get to choose? You've always got to choose. So you were me. You were brought here to help others. Move on. He nodded, a slight smile lifting his whiskers again. Mm, that's about the size of it. Well, we had a hand in it. She gives us signs, we work them out, and think is right. And what about Vivian? Where does she fit into all of this? When was I going to see her again? Are we going to try to make it work? Should we try? Mustache put a hand on my shoulder. You already know the answer to that. I never thought I'd look at Mustache the way I looked at him now. So what do I do? What's next? Bad things happen to everyone, but that doesn't mean everyone turns into monsters. You made choices, and all those little choices added up. But be to others what you should have been to your family, what you were to them when you were kind enough to give some of yourself. Protect them, love them. When they ask you to fix a leaky faucet, fix it like it's your damn job to repair what's broken. No one's ever spoken to me like that without getting a bloody lip. But tonight, I looked at him. At the leaves and at the shadows and at the moonlight and for once, I shut my goddamn mouth. He suddenly broke off, craning his neck over a clump of trees nearby. It's not over, kid. Not yet. I shot my glance over to his and I saw it. In the distance, a warm orange glow was threatening the eerie calm of the blue and purples beneath us. And I could barely make it out, but a swarm of crawlers was writhing all around. The leaves began to change to violent reds, and I felt a pull. I needed to be where the glow was. Where the night had come alive again, right in front of us. And then I realized where we were, where we had been the whole time. Where we'd never left. It was Split Oak, and it was on fire. <laughs>